Hi there. So in today's video, I want to try out a Chinese makeup trend that was at the peak of its fame about a year and a, or a year and a half ago. And the concept behind this video is typically the thumbnail is of a conventionally unattractive person, woman, and uh, the, the picture beside it is her transformed into a conventionally attractive person. Uh, and when you click on the video, you are presented with the the woman who has all the makeup on and then she proceeds to remove her makeup to reveal what she looks like in real life. She looks very dissimilar to how she began, right? Okay, so uh, I want to try out some of the tricks used in those videos and just experiment even though I'm really late to the game. Okay, so just a little bit of background information about myself. I am of Chinese descent. My, I am Singaporean. Uh, my ancestors did originate from China. And I also know that I have some Javanese uh, blood in me, I guess. Um, but a majority of my ancestors did originate from China. They moved to Singapore. Um, and if you don't know about Singapore, it is in Southeast Asia and originally the land belonged to the um, Malay people. They are the indigenous ethnicities that lived in that area and it was colonized by the British. The British made it a trading port, therefore lots of immigrant, immigrants came in from China, from India etc. And today Singapore is, has a majority population of uh, Chinese people and yeah so that's kind of the history of Singapore. So I actually watched this video from uh, what you might call it. Her, her YouTube handle is called Dope2111. Her real name is Promise Tam Tamang or Tamang, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, she is Nepalese and she primarily uh, has videos on cosplay, uh, on transforming her face into a celebrity's face or a uh, Disney character or a Halloween uh, character, whatever it is. So that is primarily what she deals in and she did do a video about this kind of Chinese trend. She didn't talk, she didn't comment on it much, but she just said like what is popular and certain products that she used that were popular in um, Chinese makeup, I guess. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is use foundation on my face. And from what I can see and what she has explained, the foundation that they use, well, they use a primer first and then they use a foundation. The essential goal of this is to lighten the skin color because um, apparently tan skin is not very desirable. I also uh, know this from my own background in Singapore where typically fairer skin is considered more desirable. Um, that's not to say there aren't people that want tan skin among the Chinese, uh, but there is a kind of trend towards wanting fairer skin. There's a lot of uh, whitening, lightening skin products, and there some people say um, that the reasoning behind this is a very Eurocentric kind of view. Um, and that might have been brought over by Western media as well as our roots in British colonization. So let me just apply this. I don't know if it's going to be terribly lighter than... Yeah, let's just do this. Uh, is this... I don't know if this is light enough. To demonstrate what I've just done, I actually placed a white concealer and I mixed it in with my typical foundation oh dear god oh no 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 oh no 
I think I got the darker foundation on my skin. Uh, on my skin, on my brush. On the white concealer's uh, applicator brush. Okay. So I'm going to go in fairer, I think. Because I don't... I think the um, appearance of the skin sh in these videos is a lot fairer. I don't know. Yeah, this one kind of looks like... Right? Okay, so this is too light for my skin and... Yeah. This is also something I did when, when I was younger, when I was 13. I tried to pick the lightest shade which didn't match my skin and I thought this looks much better I look much better like this than matching my skin with a foundation that was my skin tone it was also because of limited range of foundation and a combination of believing that fairer skin um, is just more attractive and I never did anything to my bottom neck, so I just looked like I had a very white face and a very like tanned neck. Um, very much like how I look now. <laughs> okay, so. So yeah, there are some people that do believe that this, um, this push or this desire to be fairer stems from some sort of um, Eurocentric beliefs and self... I don't want to say self-hatred because it sounds so dramatic. I would just say like rejection <laughs> of your natural self or something. But there is also the other camp that says, oh, it's, it has roots in like class hierarchy where upper classes stay indoors, don't do, aren't exposed to the sun as much and therefore are seen as more attractive because the, uh, there is a desire for upward mobility, etc, etc, etc. I don't know how much of that I buy. Um, I, I personally believe that it does root stem from some sort of um idealization of like western beauty western features because well i'm going to show you some more of what's going on uh next uh, i'm gonna do my brows i'm gonna do them in a straight fashion i'm gonna use this brush this brow thing so typically in china it seems that Straight brows are all the rage. Um, straight brows. There is some sort of uh, tapering off of the brow, but it is primarily a straight brow. Right. So in preparation for this video, I also did watch a video, a YouTube video compilation of um, Chinese women engaging in this challenge. However, I don't know if I'm comfortable with linking that video because it seems like the person that uploaded it has just um, compiled a bunch of TikTok videos and just posted the content so i don't actually have tiktok um i don't understand it i'm old i don't understand tiktok and yeah so if you are interested to look for this you are very welcome to google viral chinese makeup transformation and there should be a variety of videos for you to select from okay i think i've got the um g 
general shape down pat. I think this is kind of I think the purpose of this straight up brow is to give a more youthful appearance. I'm not entirely sure why. Like I'm not entirely yeah, I just can't figure out why like sh straight up brows make you look younger. But I guess it makes you look more like Oh, I think it just makes you look more agreeable, more innocent, like you're less likely to start a fight, you know what I mean? And perhaps that's where like these, um, standards come from, where passiveness and uh, obedience and docileness are kind of the hallmark and uh, indicator of feminine f femininity in, is in Asian culture. Oh, I forgot about this. Okay, so I have some tape. Now, this is the more extreme part of the transformation where they put tape on their face to create a more V shaped uh, jawline. Oh, so either to make your face look more slender or to make it more v-shaped i don't know so let's do that got two strips of tape placing one away no like a funnel okay so i here yeah. right No! It's not working. Crap. The stickiness is not strong. I think my face looks more angular like this. Like it just like made this... Oh. Oh yeah, I am stunning. This is so ridiculous. I think I shouldn't have applied the foundation to my neck prior to this taping thing. This feels very uncomfortable and I don't think it made much of a difference anyway. Okay, whatever. Let's just go on. If it starts to come off, I'm just going to take it off. And just leave it at that because I can't be bothered. Um, yeah. Anyway, you can use weird apps to make your face look more V-shaped. So, there's that. Next thing, I have some eyelid tape. Now, this one is a huge thing um, in a lot of like East Asian, East Asian countries. Uh, and I have used this because primary my this left eye has this thing where sometimes it's smaller the double lid at least sometimes it's either smaller or larger than this eye it's typically smaller so I tried to use this to like make it more symmetrical in a sense um, as as I got older, it kind of stabilized itself, but when I was younger, it was all over the place, especially during my menstrual cycle. This thing just wouldn't like be symmetrical to the other one. So I don't know if this is necessary because I already do have double lids, but I'll, I'll make them, I'll try to make them look bigger than they are because I think this is another one of those um, it's like it's beauty standards where like the larger your double lid is, the more attractive you look. Um, <clears throat> so this is another one of the um, things that beauty or facial um, features that these Asians typically desire which is larger looking eyes which is also considered to be some sort of Eurocentric 
Aspiration. Oh my god, what happened? It's not stabilizing. Nope. Yes. No. Yes. Okay. There we go. My eyes look larger, don't they? If I can see the band-aid on my eyes. <laughs> so ridiculous. Um, I'll probably try to cover it up with makeup. So there we go. That's the larger eye. I don't have contact lenses to like make my irises look larger, but this is... I kind of look like I haven't had enough sleep. So now this eye looks smaller than this eye now. Oi! Okay, I think this is quite equal. It's fine. Let's just leave it at this. Otherwise, we'll be here for like 10 years. So, I'm just going to try to mimic what I've seen. So, I noticed that they typically don't go up and out. They kind of keep it kind of level. So one thing I do, I have noticed about myself particularly, is that in Singapore, um, I didn't really think much about my like Chinese identity. In fact, a lot of people kind of insinuated that I was um, trying to be more westernized based on the way I spoke. And also because my Mandarin was really bad. And it is it still is really bad. Uh, and coming to Germany, I feel like I've done the opposite where I try to emphasize my Asian-ness, my Chinese-ness. More I think it's in response to like feeling very much different from the general population here and trying to hold on to some sense of identity that I still have. I mean, obviously I already appear to be Asian. That is just how I look. Um, is this the right brush? But beyond that, like deliberately trying to emphasize my heritage either through clothing or through um, like thoughts and expressions, posts, things that I say, things that I bring awareness about. Yeah, I think that very much kind of falls into that um, area. I'm going to put some shimmer on my eyes. This line of things scares me the most. I'm just gonna go towards my mirror. I don't know, I feel like this one has gone up too high. It's flicked this way, I think. This is more of the shape that they go for, which is 
like I said, more leveled with the eye. Kind of straight across instead of... Uh, Oh, there was another thing where they did something to the nose where they put like like prosthetics to um heighten the nose bridge yes that's another thing i were that i wanted to discuss the desire to heighten the nose bridge is another kind of western westernized feature i think where Westerners typically have a higher nose bridge that goes like that. Uh, Martin has this very, very high nose bridge. And if you look at him from the side, it looks like he does have like a triangle on his, as his nose. Uh, but on, on mine, if you can see, I, I don't know what you see, but yeah, you can definitely see the slope here that goes in and then out again. Okay. And this is also something I noticed on Lauren. Lauren Luke, her nose is also very much like that, where the nose bridge is higher up. Um, but she did mention that she was not too fond of the. Um, ow, my eye. The bump, like right here, of, of the nose. But anyway. I would also like to point out that like when I at home with Martin and with friends and all that this is not the way that I speak I'm speaking like this now because I'm trying to ensure that you can understand my speech that's why I'm deliberately pronounce pronouncing words pronounce pronouncing words uh, <laughs> more deliberately this is at home, this is not the way that I speak. If you want to hear the way that I speak, I, yeah, I can, I can start it like from now for a few minutes. Okay, so I'm going to transition into my typical speech pattern, which is this. This is my typical speech pattern. And sometimes Martin says that he can't understand me because I'm slurring my words. So, the um, the ebb and flow of my natural speech is a little bit more wavy, I guess, and yeah, and sometimes I do like not. Uh, I don't know. I kind of swallow my words sometimes, and then he doesn't understand me, or he says I'm speaking too softly, etc., etc. So this is this is my this is my natural kind of uh, speech pattern. Okay, I think I'm ready to put this on my eye. I see none. Oh please. Okay, five years later, I managed to get these infernal false lashes on. Uh, I, I don't... It's such... It's... Yeah. I suppose that like eyeliner, it's something that you really need to keep doing over and over again to get good at it. At the moment, it feels... It looks as if my eyes... Like I'm about to fall asleep. I don't know what exactly it is. Maybe it's like my natural lashes are kind of like going downward and create... Oh my god, look at that. What is that? That's like glue from the thing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the contouring of the nose because, well, I should have started on that a while back. Um, so what I see them doing is quite... Should I use this brush? Yeah, let's just use this brush and I use I'm using a cream contour so what they s like to do is this straight ish line okay and of course to blend like blending out later on but generally this is kind of what I see 
is going on with the eyes. And then they do this highlighty thing right down the middle. So let me get a highlighter real quick. If I can find it. Hello? Where are you? It's gonna go. And then for the contouring, let's do, um, yeah, let's just, let's just contour <clears throat> using a cream. I hope this works. Uh, okay, so you can see my tape right here. I look ridiculous. So I'm going to try to slim down to create this um, V-shape appearance. I hope this is working. I mean, I look a bit like I've got mud on the side of my face. Uh, and I think like that. Okay. Okay. So I feel like the lips are usually like this light orangey kind of shade. And that's sometimes more of a gloss. Gloss is pretty, but it always, my hair always gets stuck in the gloss. Okay, uh, I think I'm gonna highlight my cheekbones. Wait, no, should I? I should use this shade, right? I don't know. Okay. Hmm. How do I place it? Is it here? Maybe? So on my Samsung phone, it has um, a feature in the camera app where it allows you to blur out your imp imperfections, lighten your face uh, tone, slim down the jawline into that V shape and enlarge the eyes. And Samsung is a Korean company. I think, every, I think most people already know this. Um, and I think that also kind of reflects um so some sort of a, a a understanding of beauty um if major phone companies are already impl implementing these uh features within applications that are used to take pictures of people and some uh i think a while back some people were complaining that when I opened the when they opened the photo app, um, when they opened the camera app and tried to take a picture of themselves, there was automatically a filter applied to the face, and this blurred out someone's freckles. And she was upset about this because she felt like, why? Especially because the filter was called Beautify or something like this, um, she felt like, well, this is part of who I am. Why is 
erasing my freckles considered more beautiful when I actually feel that my freckles are part of my own beauty. Uh, yeah, okay, so let I w at this point, my camera can't um, video my face in with the filters and everything, so I will insert a picture of my face with the filter uh, with the filters all put in place. I can't stop laughing, I don't know why. They look very different than usual. Yeah, huh? Yeah. What, do you find this attractive? Mm, it's very jarring. It looks bad. Uh huh. But you look, something's wrong with your eyes. You look very different than usual. There's something wrong with my eyes. I don't know what's going on there. Fake eyelashes or something? Yes, there are fake lashes going on. Okay. And your right eye is somehow... Did you want to put these double eyelid stickers? Yes, I did. Okay. Mm. Yeah. You can see the stickers? No. Okay. But I can just see that your eyes are different. Okay. And yeah, a lot of bronze. Uh huh. And glossy lipstick. Mm hmm. What do you think of this compared to my regular kind of makeup? Do you prefer that or this? Or like depends on what shades I use? I'm not a huge fan of putting stuff that's not there. Mm -hmm. Like the fake lashes? Yeah. Uh -huh. But it doesn't look bad. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, you look more... I'm not sure. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's do I look youthful? More, do I look a bit younger? No, not younger. Mm -hmm. Innocent? Your, your face looks narrower than usual somehow. Mm -hmm. Your eyes look narrower than usual. My eyes look narrower? Well, I don't know. Somehow your face looks narrower. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost small. Your face looks smaller than. Look at this. The contrary. I put tape. Oh, okay. I taped my yeah. face. <laughs> okay. It's a thing that people do. I I don't know why. Yeah, but you would see that if you. Of course, you would see that. I I I didn't do it well anyway, so I just did it. Just like. Is that the reason why? RuPaul doesn't move his face and only looks into the camera head end. Well, uh, I don't think he uses this, but he definitely uses something that stretches his skin and like pulls mm. everything back. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I can see. But I didn't do that. I don't. I don't. You got something on your teeth. Huh? Are you Okay. Yeah. 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 It looks some. It, I mean, it gives me the impression something's wrong. Something yeah. is wrong. Yeah, but that's probably because that's like mm. something doesn't move. Okay. Actually. But maybe it's only because I know you look like that. So it, like, if on our first date I turned out looking like this, what would you think? You look a bit stiff. Okay. But I don't know if it's because of the tape. Or... It's because of the tape because I can't. I I'm like trying not to. Yeah. yeah. Then, yeah that looks a bit like something you're trying to hide something. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much. For your impression. Uh, I cannot, I can't with this tape thing. I can't, I don't know why. I'm fine. I do contour my face from time to time, but this is just too much. What is this? I don't know. Um, and I also don't enjoy the feeling of false lashes on my eyes. <laughs> okay, so for the sake of. Um, I don't know, this video, I'm going to remove the makeup. Ow, ow. Oh. 
I spent forever putting these damn things on and now I have to take them off. <laughs> oh, 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 and the tape thing. Oh my gosh. Ow. Ow. Well, there you can see it. There's no makeup there. That's why, that's why there's a bare spot. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Another thing I wanted to mention about those videos that you've seen is uh, that it is quite apparent that the after pictures or the natural pictures, let's say, uh, have been altered in a sense to exaggerate imperfections, in my opinion. And that's done by creating blemishes where there are none or discoloration where there is none an unevenness of the skin tone um, and I also believe they some of them have done something to their teeth like blacked out like one or one tooth or something like that they also um, feature themselves in less trendy clothing and in the uh, beauty shot they're wearing something a little bit more trendy a little bit more on fashion and yeah i think that's part of the whole thing and in all of the transformations the stark difference is definitely the skin tone so you can see in the oh see after i took off the tape you can see that my eye has kind of decided to um, conform to the, the, the shape that was forced upon it. <laughs> so I personally wouldn't want to go through all of that um, extra steps in which you tape your face back, you put on false lashes, and you uh, put on prosthetic clay to create the illusion of a higher nose bridge. I don't think that's necessary for me. I typically am comfortable enough to go out looking the way I do as I am right now without any sort of makeup on. Sometimes I go completely barefaced, and if I feel like doing an eyeshadow look, then I will go all out with the shimmer and the dark matte shadow and the contour and the highlighter, etc. etc. So, yeah, I just think that you should do what pleases yourself. If you feel that you like a certain aesthetic, that's your face and you can do what you want but I think one thing to keep in the back of your mind is where do these standards come from um, and yeah maybe experiment a little bit more with different kinds of looks so I think that's it from me um, engage and subscribe of your own volition and ciao for now.